All right. I think we are our good start. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. All right. Good afternoon. Good everyone. Good afternoon. I am Jade Brown Russell, founder okay. and CEO of Maroon and principal of JD Russell Consulting. And I am a proud board chair of the Urban League of Louisiana for the third year. We are bringing together African-American mayors from cities across Louisiana. This year, we'll be asking them to share what is happening in their respective parts of the state, the experience of leading through a global pandemic, their plans for creating more sustainable cities and the opportunities to increase equity through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Now, let me introduce our mayors. Uh, we have Sh uh, Sharon Weston Brum, Mayor President of the Baton Rouge. Sharon Weston Brum has served as the Mayor President of the City of Baton Rouge and East Baton Rouge Parish since 2017. She is the first woman to be elected as the leader of the capital city of Louisiana. She has focused her time as mayor president on improving infrastructure, equality in education, economic development, justice, housing, and other quality ways of life. She previously served as a Baton Rouge Metro City Council member, a Louisiana state representative, and a Louisiana state senator. We also have with us today, Jeff Hall, Mayor of Alexandria. Since 2018, Mayor Hall has served as the 24th Mayor of Alexandria, Louisiana in Rapides Parish. Prior to that, he served as a state representative for District 26. He is a graduate of Grambling State University and a former president of the DeSoto Parish Chamber of Commerce. And last but not least, Latoya Cantrell, Mayor of New Orleans. On May 7, 2018, Mayor Cantrell was sworn in as the first female mayor of New Orleans after serving the New Orleans City Council and before that as president of the Broadmoor Improvement Association, where she led the neighborhood's redevelopment following Hurricane Katrina and the levee failures. Graduate of Xavier University, Mayor Cantrell has prioritized citizen engagement, which reflects her own commit commitment to community service. Mayors, as always, we value your presence and leadership again for the Urban League. This is our third year hosting this panel, and it is always exciting to see our elected leadership come together. We have a lot of runway with only one hour. So let's get it started. Okay. Uh, we have a few questions and we'll um, call each one of you as we um, come out of these uh, di uh, different uh, questions. The first one, what is happening in your respective cities since the last that we've been here? What are your constituents saying? What are some of the bright spots that you all are seeing. Let's start with Mayor Weston Broom. Thank you, Jade. And hello uh, to my fellow mayors, uh, my sister mayor, Mayor Latoya Cantrell and uh, Mayor Jeff Hall, who uh, was in one of my early leadership classes on the uh, journey, Louisiana leadership. So glad, and everyone who's participating today. Uh, this, of course, has been, um, uh, Unpre these have been unprecedented times. Um, and, you know, I'm, uh, it's been the worst of times and the best of times, as, as one author puts it. And so, of course, you know, everyone is very happy uh, that we are seem to be moving out of the COVID-19 um, or a pandemic, or should I rephrase that and say the intensity of the COVID-19 pandemic that we early had early on. And as a result of this uh, pandemic, as a result of the uh, new uh, administration, the Biden-Harris administration, uh, many of the challenges that we face as mayors, and I can certainly enumerate those 
uh, challenges, we now have unprecedented funding to address those challenges. You know, Baton Rouge is no different than any other city. We're facing some of the same challenges, challenges around infrastructure, around public uh, safety. And so we're using these unprecedented ARPA uh, funding for a variety of, of, of programs. And our citizens also uh, see uh, a bright spot, see a new horizon emerging as a, re as a result of that, because we're making investments in um, um, uh, violence prevention, in uh, youth employment efforts, in uh, inf you know, drainage, um, things that impact the quality of life for our citizens uh, here. And so um, these big investments that we can make in our quality of life uh, certainly have added, a, uh, added optimism and hope and encouragement uh, to our citizens. Our overall economy here in our region is 2% of pre-pandemic employment rates. So we have seen some huge rebounds as a result of these unprecedented times. Great, thank you so much. Let me um, let me get um, Mayor Hall in here. Um, sure. What's happening in your respective cities? What's, what's your uh, constituents talking about and what's the, the bright spots there? Sure, and, and good afternoon to you. And and certainly uh, it's always uh, amazing to, to hear uh, Mayor Broom articulate, but she does so well and covered all the grounds as well. And certainly Mayor Contrell certainly gonna do the same thing, but uh, we can only echo uh, what uh, Mayor Broom has just shared with, uh, with everybody. We too have, uh, have, have had those same challenges uh, you know, with the pandemic and seeing the, the citizens now with the various waves that did occur since our last meeting uh, seem to be coming out of it. Uh, what I see citizens in the area, uh, I, I picture what was going on at the time, even a, a, a real serious storm from our standpoint, as it relates to uh, Laura Delta, as well as the ice storm, uh, citizens that saw things that they'd never seen before, especially this far north of the Gulf, uh, sustained in uh, 100 mile an hour winds. And uh, we had never seen 100% of our customers without power. And uh, people wanted to see what the leadership would do. I'm proud to say, uh, as I'm sure my, uh, my fellow mayors are as well, our employees stepped up and did yeoman's work uh, because they saw things that they had never seen. But uh, together we figured out how to get through it. As a result, uh, we do have citizens that's, that's coming back, uh, wanting things to take place, wanting to try to get back to whatever that new normal is going to be. Uh, and we are trying to supply that as safely as we possibly can. We're on the positive side where we're beginning to uh, enjoy our festivities or trying to move toward enjoying our festivities and, and move back in that positive direction. The opera dollars and things that are becoming available are certainly uh, timely uh, with the administration, uh, the federal administration that's there now and much, much needed. We are somewhat north of, uh, of, of the Gulf in what we would call an agriculturally rural area. Even though we are an urban area with about 50,000 in population, we are surrounded by another 40 to 60,000 small town, 40 population small towns. And uh, we are the, uh, the destination city, if you would, in this central region of the community. So the hospitalization, the medicals and everything pretty much is done here, especially uh, the retail uh, impacts are basically here. So we are adjusting and trying to see what's next and how do we can best utilize these opportunities uh, with the offer funds, with resiliency of being built into the infrastructure, which is certainly aging as is in other places in the nation and uh, trying to prioritize and, and get to what we need to get. The main thing is, is to try to keep the economy as stable as we possibly can and also look positively in the future as to where we're going to go, because we happen to be one of the municipalities that also is a uh, producer and a distributor of electrical of the electrical grid in the area. So uh, we have some added responsibilities and a unique, uh, difficult time in trying to keep that local expertise needed to operate such a highly complex and futuristic uh, 
industry. But overall, the, the citizens, uh, the employees, and everybody has, has hubbed together and, and tried to cover as much as we possibly can to keep people as safe as we possibly can at the same time, move in a positive direction, uh, redefine it and communicate it, and certainly keep things going as best we can to be prepared for what's going to be happening uh, as we move into the future. Thank you so much, Mayor Hall. Um, I want to get uh, to hear uh, uh, from Mayor Cantrell. Um, what is happening in New Orleans? What are your constituents saying and what are the bright spots um, that sure. we're seeing? Sure. Thank, thank you so much uh, to the Urban League family and Jay, your leadership as chair and, and Judy's uh, leadership as uh, CEO. Uh, to my brother and my sister uh, mayors, it's always good to be with you all and just hearing you uh, describe what's happening uh, in your cities is surely aligned with what we're seeing in the city of New Orleans. Uh, of course, you know, we were a hot spot at the start of, of this COVID-19 and has uh, led in a, a very distinct way locally as well as in the state and nation uh, combating COVID-19. Uh, so. Where we are now is just seeing some signs of normalcy again uh, in the city. Uh, just uh, was able to have a safe uh, Mardi Gras, uh, which was successful, largely contributed to the city employees, especially our, our unified and public safety team, uh, Chief Ferguson and NOPD, along with, you know, again, our entire unified public safety officials from the state, the federal government, and of course here on the ground, uh, recently announced the return of the Crescent City Classic next month. Uh, we'll be hosting the NCAA uh, Men's Final Four in a couple of weeks. Uh, French Quarter Festival will be larger than it's ever been before. Jazz Fest Essence uh, is, is, is planning uh, to return this July. Uh, the team just left the city on yesterday. And so, you know, getting back to uh, uplifting our festivals, uh, which is a part of uh, our culture uh, in the city and contributes largely to our economy here locally, but also uh, in the state. So it feels good uh, to have had to make tough decisions, uh, prove that they were the right thing to do uh, in order to get our lives back. But at the same time, understanding that it requires balance uh, because we're still in a pandemic we always have to look at what's happening, even as we look at China, uh, what's going on now, you know, and uh, they're not out of the woods, which means that we are not either. And so uh, we're just trying to, to be um, remain um, and strike that right balance, even as it relates to infrastructure. I heard my brother and sister mayor uh, talk about that. You know, we kept infrastructure work uh, going on in the city of New Orleans in the midst of this pandemic because we had to uh, spending over a billion uh, in in work and making sure uh, that we do some things that we've never done with our pipes, our drainage, uh, over a hundred year old pipes that are being dug up in the streets. And this, you know, the residents are very frustrated, unfortunately, but at the same time, very happy once they see the progress come to completion. So again, it's striking that right balance by bringing your people along, but also focusing on things that are not painless, that are disruptive, but are necessary in order to deal with the challenges that we've had to face uh, with our drainage, uh, with our utilities, uh, and also with spending federal money that is on deadline. And also demonstrating our resources and the American Rescue Plan dollars. And so it's a work in progress, um, you know, had to fight very hard uh, for direct allocation because that's something that we needed and the city of New Orleans has yet to be fully reimbursed uh, from expenses that we incurred fighting COVID-19 being that hot spot, 70 million we still have yet to receive. So again, direct allocation is something that we're looking uh, forward to that helped us kind of fill that gap, but also looking forward to a second tranche. But you know, there's talk at the federal level that maybe we may not see that tranche. And so with that, we have to, again, remain very focused on our financial stability 
and forecasts that's necessary to um, prevent deficit spending and prevent us uh, from moving backward because we have to move forward. Thank you so much um, for that um, that conversation, Mayor Cantrell. We, so we have a lot that we got to unpack, right? Uh, a lot of the things that you all have highlighted in your uh, opening comments. Uh, Mayor Cantrell highlighted, for example, COVID-19 and the recovery in New Orleans, which is a, a great transition to one of the, uh, the uh, questions that we have on our list. Um, but Mayor Hall, Mayor uh, Western Broom, what has the experience of managing the pandemic looked like for you all? Mayor Cantrell just talked about uh, what that looks like for her, but what is the recovery looking like in your cities? I'll, I'll ask Mayor uh, Hall first. Okay, sure. Okay, without a doubt. Uh, we're seeing very similar situations uh, to start with. Uh, we were kind of lagging as it relates to uh, the, the vaccination when we were going through that phase. We were in this region very slow in percentage of getting our people vaccinated uh, because it just wasn't working like it should have. But uh, all the subject matter experts and others jumped in and did what they could to remove those fears and get things picked up a little bit. Uh, the other areas were, were doing fairly well, but we felt that we needed to do a little bit better. And uh, we did uh, get a little bit better. We were a little slow in, in region six of, of the state as it relates to the percentage of vaccination, but uh, it began to catch up and we begin to see the result and see the curve uh, begin to take, a, take an impact. So right now, uh, we think we're doing pretty good overall. Uh, we are strapped with the situation at the hospitalizations. Uh, the two hospitals in the uh, 16 parish area, 18 parish area, happen to be in Alexandria. <clears throat> so, excuse me. So, we were really tasking uh, the medical individuals as to, as to being able to service the, the amount of infection that we were getting. But thank be to the Almighty God, things did turn around and uh, we got better at it, and people uh, began to adhere to the safety precautions. Seems like it was working a lot better at this point. We're in a much better place, much better place than where we were before. We're proud to say at the same time, from the retail standpoint and operational standpoint, we seem to be recovering. We happen to be in an area that happened to be a, a strong military area as it relates to Fort Polk and the surrounding military bases. This makes us the destination community for a lot of retail and a lot of things that take place specifically in the medical. So uh, as a result, we're doing a, a lot better than what we were. Uh, we feel uh, that we're in a much better place and, and things are gonna turn around like Mayor Cantrell did say, we know what's going on in China and it's not over with. So we have to continue to get people vaccinated and understand what the new uh, normal will be even as it relates to vaccination. So we are cognizant of that. Operationally, our employees are doing what they need to do. Uh, they follow the instructions and we, we did not drop and lose any uh, long-term services as it relates to bus transit, uh, public safety, and what have you with the fire. We did have our challenges like everybody else did have. We had people to get infected, but we did work together as a group and were able to continue to keep the community safe as possible and protected. So with that, we're basically thinking from the, that particular point, we are in a pretty good recovery position right now. We're doing very well. And uh, we're just kind of waiting and moving forward and trying to get fully functional again as it relates to our retail businesses and what have you. And I'll close this on this part. Uh, we, like everybody else, is having trouble uh, as it relates to trying to get employees, trying to get people employed, whatever drives that. That is a challenge for every, all, every industry that we can think of. But we certainly have our challenges as well. Uh, I will say that uh, thankful to the uh, our congressional people, our legislative people, they did visit the area and give us hope, give us encouragement, especially on the resiliency that we needed to have in order to keep our system going. So without hogging the uh, phone line too much, I'll go ahead and shut down right there and, and cover some of the other things for sure. But overall, we think we're recovering as best as could be expected. Sounds great. Thank you, Mayor Weston Brum. What, what, what's the recovery looking like in Baton Rouge? Uh, I, I'm encouraged about our uh, recovery here in uh, Baton Rouge. Uh, right now, we have a moderate risk for COVID-19 uh, with 2.3% uh, of all COVID tests 
reporting uh, positive results. And so uh, one of the biggest challenges we've seen has been uh, addressing the need to provide rental and utility assistance to our citizens. And so since we stood up our emergency rental assistance program more than a year ago, we have dispersed $36 million in assistance to over uh, nearly 7,000 households. And just last evening at an emergency council meeting, we introduced the reallocation from the US Treasury Department of another $33 million of assistance that could benefit another uh, 6,500 households. So we're doing our best here uh, to keep families from becoming homeless or losing their utilities. We actually provide a leg up and we don't just want to pay off rent this past due. In, in many cases, we provide a three month advance on future rent, which allows families to focus on other needs like nutritional food and um, medical or mental health care. And, and we've also, and I had the pleasure of attending this meeting, we built a network of landlords. Uh, and then through that network, we gathered their feedback to better understand their needs. So we could have better collaboration between landlords and uh, renters. And so we're helping them connect with the resources, the landlords to rehabilitate their properties, to bring them up to code and expect for things like lead paint and asbestos. And so uh, in closing our overall economy, uh, as I said earlier, um, it is, is good with only 2% of pre-pandemic unemployment rates. Um, just like I heard Mayor Hall said, and I'm, I'm sure we all could sing this same song, is that we all are challenged with workforce issues, uh, getting uh, finding employees. Who, who would have ever thought that this would be such a, a heightened and major issue for us? finding people to assume uh, jobs that we have, but it is. And so um, what we're doing as, as I shift a little bit is we're, we're focusing now to engage our young people um, in higher education throughout our region, about 55,000. So we're taking steps to show them the career and quality of life opportunities in Baton Rouge. And of course, this will help our workforce. Uh, our cha chamber has various initiatives uh, to engage students off campus to bridge the gap with small businesses who may not have the resources to connect with our best and brightest minds. And so it's an out of side the box approach um, that hopefully will keep our talent here in our community and add value to our workforce development. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, Mayor Cantrell, you talked about the recovery of our economy at, at New Orleans. What are you looking at ahead for this phase of COVID-19 at New Orleans? We always talk about the difference between recovery and resilience and how do we help resilience, re resiliency for New Orleans citizens? So in terms of this uh, part of the recovery, uh, it we all we have to always be focused on one the vaccinations now the the city of new orleans is about not we're right, well over 90 percent um vaccinated that's the first and fully uh, vaccinated in the city which sets the tone for our economy um uh, coming back and businesses uh seeing visitors again and, and being able to fully you know open up but the reality is, and what uh, my brother and sister mayor uh, spoke about is the overall workforce. Um, we're still uh, having issues with getting people back to work and city government is a part of that um, as well. Um, we have um, many, many vacancies that are tied to providing basic uh, city services uh, to our residents. And at the same time, even right now in the council chambers, I have council members proposing legislation to freeze uh, spending in key departments like the Department of Public Works. And so of course, if, if that happens, right, then that has a direct impact, not only on finding and striking that balance on the infrastructure work that's happening in the street and on the streets, but also being able uh, uh, to meet the demands uh, of, of the people that we serve and to keep that progress uh, moving forward. 
So it's it's many different challenges that we continue to to face uh, in order to fix. But in terms of our recovery, um, we're also uh, focusing heavily on all of this infrastructure work as it relates to the contractors and the subcontractors and putting them in the best position to bid on these projects as primes. And so for the first time, we've seen that our subs are now primes on large uh, construction jobs. And then the, 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 the primes are now coming in as subs. And so this is our way of restructuring to ensure that the work is done and the, the, um, the resources, the funding is just distributed equitably so that people can truly get their fair uh, share out of what's coming, what's happening, but also what's coming our way uh, through the, the IJA uh, resources. And so it's making sure again that public safety, balancing that out as the city comes back alive and hosting large scale events. Uh, and also when we think about uh, the, uh, the lag or the capacity of our public safety team to manage uh, through these initiatives. And so just being very thoughtful, being very strategic and leveraging resources at every level so that we can continue to host large scale events, have visitors come to the city, as well as manage work that's happening in communities that are tied to uh, the daily quality of life for our residents. So it's, it's striking that balance and it's accountability at every single level, including when we talk about violent crime uh, in our city as well, which is not just in New Orleans, it's all around, but my focus is here. Uh, in Orleans Parish. And so when we hadn't had jury trials in over two years, and thank God that resumed over a week ago, and even as relates to working with our district attorney in terms of prosecuting cases. And so we're seeing things move uh, in the right direction now, but the impacts of not uh, having this in full swing has had an impact on the ground in our community and in, throughout our city. Absolutely. Mayor Cantrell has our uh, playbook today. Uh, she has just talked about um, the infrastructure. We want to transition uh, from COVID to infrastructure. Our theme this year, Mayor Cantrell, is equitable sustainability, building Louisiana's infrastructure beyond roads and, and bridges. So we've heard uh, so many speakers share about many aspects of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, such as broadband uh, access, transportation, um, and more. What does the infrastructure bill mean to each of your uh, cities? So I'll, I'll start with Mayor Hall. Sure, uh, with, without a doubt, uh, that's the key one. As I shared with you earlier, we happen to be <clears throat> the operator of our generation system uh, as it generates electricity, as well as distribute. Uh, a main problem that we, we, we've had uh, has been infrastructure. So uh, certainly we, we need to build some resiliency there and uh, through uh, the, the federal government and some help uh, that's coming our way, uh, that, that's gonna be possible. Also with the water system, water as well as wastewater, but mostly water systems, because uh, when you lose power from your pumps, you certainly don't have the power to uh, to do the things you need to do with your water system as well as your wastewater system. So we have to build some resiliency there because a lot of this infrastructure there is not in the city limits and is not supplied by power from our city limits. So we are able to get some help there with huge generators that will be on standby to help us in the future as we move forward as well as reclaim water wells within the city limits themselves. So when you say equity, uh, I think that's the key word there, balance fairness for all. Uh, we have infrastructure in the city as the mayor Cantrell had mentioned about that she had something that was as old as 100 years. We do too. And that's a bad thing because uh, that's, uh, you need some help with that. We needed some financial help with that. So that's gonna make life a lot better, a lot different as we begin to put these dollars to work to enhance infrastructure. One of the things I'd share with you uh, that December prior in 2019, prior to the pandemic hitting three months later, uh, we were hit with a tornado that completely destroyed our one of our major recreation areas of about 10, 12 million dollars worth of damage that we had to restore. And uh, we, we had to get that going because that was one of the uh, attractions that brought the neighboring areas there for 
uh, recreation year round and doing things. So we really had to get that going. And on top of that, an ice storm hit us a couple of times and set us back even further. So resiliency is certainly was, a, uh, was, was the order of the day, but equity doing as fairly as possible for all parts of the infrastructure. Uh, our police, uh, public safety department and fire, we were in the midst of negotiating when the pandemic really hit of everything. The, the salaries for employees, especially the non-fire, non-police, had not been a market research done in over 10 years. They were real, but really behind as, as relates to market-based salaries. Uh, the police department contract, they had not had a contract in over five years. So we were losing policemen left and right. We were so far behind. So we were able to negotiate a contract with the police and with the fire and were able to get it successfully negotiated and then uh, get a pay study done at the same time and get those implemented. So now it's in the reverse. We are building back up with our police department, which is a very tough job to do as Mayor Cantrell alluded to uh, with everybody having that same problem. That uh, doesn't help when, when you have a rise in homicide and crime problem and you have a police shortage. So we were able to turn that around with negotiations on both unions and the market research that was done for the police and fire get accepted, get a matrix agreed upon, the council passed it. And now we're in the middle of uh, research that's being done, market research for the rest of the non-fire, non-police, uh, fire uh, the employees, uh, all classified and unclassified that's being done now. So we are about 90 days or more out from having that information back, but we're on the right trail uh, for recovery. We feel like we are. So with that said, when you've got a, a decent workforce and you're building a competitive workforce, you're able to continue to deliver the great services that these citizens deserve, then we are in a better position for economic development, for attracting people to come and develop in our community, to live in our community, to shop and thrive in our community. And as uh, the other uh, speakers are saying, our quality of life can truly be maintained, if not even enhanced. So, we are looking in those areas. I share that with you very briefly. Uh, those are some areas that we are proud of that we've had some success. We got many more to do as we prepare for whatever uh, next new normal situation is certainly going to be. So uh, that's kind of where we are with resiliency and recovery with the Infrastructure and Jobs Act. Thank you, Mayor Hall. Mayor Weston Brum, what, what does the infrastructure bill mean um, for Baton Rouge? Well, I will tell you, um, inf infrastructure is the is the is the key word these days across all cities, uh, because all cities have been historically struggling and challenged with infrastructure uh, dollars, and so um, the um, uh, infrastructure and jobs act certainly will be utilized at the uh, max here in Baton Rouge. Uh, I am seeing this as an opportunity for us to build on an infrastructure investment that we made, a historical investment in 2018 with our MOVE EBR program. Uh, and so we see the, the opportunity now to leverage these federal uh, dollars uh, and so we have major projects uh, that are located in low to moderate income census tracts, right? Um, and these projects would significantly improve the quality of life in their area uh, and would also, also uh, add and benefit the uh, disadvantaged businesses that are located along those quarters those quarters being Airline Highway and the Florida Boulevard uh, project, which we see as two top contenders for uh, infrastructure uh, dollars. So we're going to continue to request funding to address flood mitigation um, by through our stormwater conveyance uh, system and, and cleaning and enhancements. We're going to also uh, seek to build out electrical vehicle charging infrastructure across our city parish, as well as enhance our dock capacity to expand tourism and build out something um, that Mayor Cantrell and I have been in many conversations about. We want, we want to build out our passenger rail station yes. here that will support new passenger rail 
capabilities that that uh, Mayor Cantrell and I are looking at from a regional perspective. And of course, fund infrastructure for um, our literal reduction and, and beneficial reuse efforts. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much, Mayor Cantrell. You made a big comment aligned that it aligns with our theme that infrastructure and for infrastructure can't just be roads and, and bridges, right? It, it, it has to be bigger than just bigger than that. Um, any final comments? I know you started the, the conversation on the infrastructure bill, but I wanted to give you any final comments um, before we, we moved over to the, the next uh, question. Right, so I believe that uh, Mayor Broom and Mayor Hall have touched uh, on on IG in terms of the, you know the infrastructure, in terms of roads and bridges and the like, and and and, and absolutely, um, you know, in New Orleans we're we're on the same page with that. But to your point, uh, we have to focus on the social or human infrastructure as well. So my administration has leveraged both the private dollars as well as partnerships to run programming, really that builds on that human infrastructure side. And you know, all residents can enjoy a more equitable city with that focus. So whether that is you know, our commitment to crime and blight in, in key neighborhoods, um, our Office of, of Gun Violence Prevention, uh, one of the first in the country, you know, with the Center for Employment Opportunities, where we are uh, putting those reentering society back into work, like right now, um, and this, these uh, individuals will assist us in blight reduction. So looking at it, looking through that lens a little bit differently, how you bring people along and use this as an opportunity to elevate uh, folks within our community. Also in regards to technology and information and innovation, we're working to build the fiber infrastructure for citizen broadband. Um, the good news is that pre-pandemic, the city had assessed uh, its gap it, all of our gaps in terms of technology and broadband in the city. So we know where our vulnerable, vulnerable populations are, are those that are disconnected from. And so now with additional resources coming our way and those that we're putting in the ground, even from the private sector, we're able to go in and improve the infrastructure and access for our people. So looking at things uh, differently, overall quality of life and wage, um, you know, dealing with that wage gap, dealing with home ownership, uh, even with Ida coming our way and seeing how our homeowners were impacted by uh, these large deductibles from insurance companies. And really, we hadn't seen the impacts of, of Hurricane Katrina. You know, we saw it in our bills, our insurance bills, but the deductibles, our people were hit very hard. So we had to stand up a fund just to help our homeowners in that regard. And of course, utilize resources, as Mayor Broom mentioned, about our rental, our rental uh, community. Uh, but it's really looking at things in a more holistic manner and just trying to meet our people where they are. And that's our human capital. Our culture is tied to that as well. And so, you know, we're, we're doing the best that we can, but turning the map around a little bit from past experiences. Absolutely. Well, the, the Urban League and the Legislative Black uh, Caucus held our annual statewide Listen and Learn Tour last um, this past August, and three of the top issues raised by residents across the state continue to be police reform, education equity, and small business support. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to hear from you all. What is happening in your com communities related to these big issues? I'll start with Mayor uh, Weston Broom. Well, uh, indeed, um, these issues surrounding police reform, education equity, and certainly uh, small business support are, I think, uh, very critical issues to the quality of life of, of any community. And so our police reform started uh, when I assumed office. Um, the year that I ran for office in 2016, uh, we had the killing of Alton Sterling, an officer involved killing and shooting. We then had uh, the ambush of police officers that were killed. Uh, and um, of course, we were a community in trauma. Those were traumatic experiences for us. 
And so when I took office, it was incumbent upon me to certainly it, 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 to make this a priority because it was a priority for our, our community. I didn't have to really make it one. It was a priority, but it was my responsibility mm -hmm. as the leader of the city and parish to immediately address it. And so what we did is we updated our use of force policy. We issued body cameras for every officer. We passed uh, legislation restricting no-knock warrants. And we had serious conversations about challenging topics in our community. And so um, our use of force policies uh, are now in alignment with best practices in the country. We have a um, stellar police chief uh, who is doing transformative work in our department. We're uh, closing the gap between our citizens and our um, uh, police department with our chief's uh, advisory uh, council. And, and let me just say this, um, the tragedy, the horrific tragedy of George Floyd served as a catalyst, if you will, for police reform on a variety of levels and obviously needed around America. We started that, and during that season, we start, you, everybody started getting um, uh, um, emails uh, of concern about what you're doing in your community uh, to address police reform. And I could accurately say that many of the items that people wanted you to check off we could already we had already accomplished those uh, in our community and so um we certainly have been uh working even on the proactive side and i'll wrap it up so my colleagues can talk uh for example we have a strong youth summer uh employment initiative because we have when we talk about violence prevention when we talk about public safety you have to look at it through a lens, a holistic lens, if you will. And so that includes uh, our, our youth, it includes on the job training, it includes mental health, social services, et cetera. So we've started uh, to do those things. And as it relates real quickly uh, to uh, small businesses with our movie VR program, we have uh, now seen a DBE participation rate of 25 to 30%. And that's without a DBE program. We're moving towards that now with our division of supplier diversity. But I have made the commitment and I stand on that commitment and we're seeing the needle move uh, to include small business uh, owned by minorities and women and veterans. And I will tell you this, and my colleagues know this as well, that these issues around equity and inclusion do not just happen. They do not just happen. You have to be very intentional. And it's with collaboration with organizations like the Urban League that it helps us make diversity, inclusion, and equity part of the fabric of not only our administration, but of our communities. Absolutely. Um, Mayor Cantrell talked about a, a little while ago about social infrastructure. We have to do that. We have to do it all. Um, I want to hear from Mayor Hall. Um, those three uh, priority issues, police reform, education, equity, small business support. Also, if you have any others in, in addition to those, but those were the three that we saw in our tour um, over in August. Um, what, what's happening in your uh, in your cities um, with those issues? Right, uh, glad to share. Uh, as you mentioned with police reform, and uh, as Mayor Broom so eloquently identified, uh, those situations, that situation, as I shared with you earlier, as it relates to the situation of our police department when I uh, took over uh, three years ago, uh, was no union contract. Uh, we were tremendous vacancies, uh, leaving the police force. We're in the center of the state in a very rural, a very agriculturally driven community. And comparison of salaries are very low. So uh, we had some problems. So we were able to complete that, as I shared with you earlier, those studies, uh, survey studies, and also do a union contract. 
and we were able to get things reversed. Uh, we're not bleeding for more as, as anymore like we once were with a lack of, uh, of, of people doing the job. And we're beginning to get the weight off the police force because they were stretched and strained and trying to keep those zones open and well protected, which they did a, a superb job. And we're getting in a much better place. We also have a different police chief now. Uh, we had a little controversy back and forth there, but we have a very, very qualified, excellent chief. Uh, chief Howard doing an excellent job, he and the staff, and we're recovering. Homicides, as uh, Mayor Con Contrell alluded to, was exploding all over the, the, the nation and area, but here in central Louisiana, where we were, it was uh, the worst that we had ever seen. And uh, things, uh, 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 I won't say normal, we still have homicides, but it's not where, it where we once were. So we may be on the right track, going in the right direction there. So definitely we have, there's more to do. We uh, do have a camera system that's installed in the downtown area now that we didn't have before that's brought back uh, as a resource, as a tool to be able to do things a lot better. And many other things that we're doing from a theoretical and an operational perspective uh, and administrative perspective in the police force seems to be working for us in that area. Uh, educational equity was a big problem. It is a big problem. Uh, when we look at the situation that we had here, uh, our failing schools we discovered in a unique area where we had failing schools, we pretty much had community centers. Uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, the community services had put together a program in, in conjunction with the school board, who are the educational subject matter experts as to what we could do <clears throat> because of the socioeconomic reality and the reality of those numbers in failing schools. So we were able to partner with them and others and offer tutoring uh, to our young kids. We would like to go pre-K on up, but we not able to do it all at one time and then the pandemic struck. So we were hit with the law for a while there. And because of unserved and underserved uh, uh, connectivity as it relates to the uh, to electronic connectivity and, and uh, internet, uh, internet access, uh, we had problems there. So the uh, community centers was the place to begin to fill that gap. And we even have more opportunities now as it relates to the opera dollars and dollars that's available for broadband and things like that nature. But right now, the tutoring in the schools, utilizing our uh, community centers and partnering with the school board and others seems to be working well. We're just getting started. We got a ways to go, but you got to start doing something somewhere. So we're pretty happy with that and the way that's going. Uh, small business and what we're doing there, we had a big problem there. One of the problems is that we discovered that there had never been a, dis a disparity study done with the city of Alexandria. I was able to uh, talk with people from the cities like New Orleans with uh, Mayor Cantrell and certainly Mayor, Mayor Broom, and uh, they had to really lay the framework on what we should be doing. So we followed suit, uh, we got the disparity done, but it happened to be in the middle of the pandemic, which slowed things down. So we should be getting the final draft on that any, any day right now, but we do know that that's gonna make a difference. And as they have said before, uh, with that as a base, should help us in developing programs to how we can do something that's gonna be sustainable to try to help small business with, with equity, as we said before. Equity and sustainability is key. And with a disparity study, it is a great tool to be able to figure out what works for your specific area and with the specific needs that's in those areas. So with that, uh, the small business uh, impact, we think we're gonna be able to make a realistic impact uh, with the understanding that what we are getting from the raw data of that disparity study, which will help us do a much better job in being fair and getting people in line so that they can bid and participate in so much of the work that comes at least from the city of Alexandria and not at all just limited to the city of Alexandria, but even to the surrounding area and uh, potential that's in the surrounding states as well. So that's pretty much what uh, I would share with you with those three topics. Thank you so much, Mayor Hall. I'll um, let the, the final comment on this uh, question for Mayor Cantrell. Those three um, big issues, police reform, education equity, and small business uh, support. Sure, yeah, I'm, I get so inspired by listening to uh, Mayor Hall and Mayor Broom. Um, you know, public safety is, is an issue of public health. That's how we're looking at it. And as it relates to police reform, 
Well, one thing that um, pushed us into this was the New Orleans Police Department uh, being under a consent decree. And over the past uh, three and a half years, we've seen significant uh, progress in this regard as it relates to that. Um, through the uh, years of social unrest that we saw demonstrated with protests and the like throughout the country, the New Orleans Police Department was really on that, on that national stage uh, where we had, you know, they were pushing for, the public was pushing for, you know, eight can't wait nationally. But here in New Orleans, well, we didn't wait. We had already adopted the eight policies and principles that folks were asking for and really went a, a bit further, uh, implementing 10 of those reform initiatives. And as a result of that, um, you know, the people in our city uh, are really supportive of our police department. Constitutional policing practices is, is what we um, have embraced fully. Uh, one example, just a couple of weeks ago, we had two uh, officer uh, involved uh, shootings in the city where one uh, individual perpetrator uh, was killed. Um, but as a result of that, and as the investigations move forward, you know, it was proven that constitutional policing practices were not only utilized, but even when you look at your community, the response from the community was nothing but support for NOPD. And so when I look at, you know, how can you measure effectiveness or improvements or the overall impact, positive impact, is turning to the community to see how they respond uh, to the actions of our police department. But we're moving forward and also um, seeing how we're called upon nationally by other departments to teach, you know, at the epic, you know, ethical policing is courageous. It was created here in New Orleans and it's being taught around the country um, because we're being sought, sought, you know, after, even as relates to um, capacity and, and departments needing to build capacity on a national level. I'm having to push back you know, to some of these mayors looking at my department, looking to steal uh, the men and women within my rank and file and even my police chief, you know, and, and top leadership. So it's like, hold up now, don't, don't steal our people. But, you know, again, uh, it's a testament to our department. Equity in education has been a top priority. You know, our city was one of the first uh, in the state and really even in the country to invest in early childhood education. Uh, we were able to leverage over seven million in local tax dollars to expand this access, and um, and and we have grown to three million annually to early childhood. And in the there will be on the ballot in April an initiative that I'm pushing for, and that is um, permanent uh, support and resources for early childhood education for the city of New Orleans because this is an equity issue. This is the gap. It's formed in these early years, and we believe that we can do not only something about it, but we know that it will lead to uh, transferable wealth and uh, decrease that, that wage gap and opportunity gap for our families, for our young people. Small business support remains a priority. Um, you know, we're really focusing heavily on new growth sectors. Although we play to our strengths in regards to hospitality, no doubt about it, that cannot be the basis of our economy from, from here on out. So looking at tech, we've demonstrated here in our city that not only we can help our uh, folks start up, but we can help them scale up. And so we put three tech firms that are unicorn, you know, right here uh, during the midst of a pandemic. So we've demonstrated that this place, our city, uh, is a place for um, innovation, bio-innovation as well, STEM, you name it, it's right here. So, you know, we're, it's a work in progress, but we're meeting people where they are, workforce development and training, uh, green jobs, growing that sector as it relates to infrastructure. And, and we're seeing the benefits of that. And so I'm just looking forward to double downing uh, on, in some of these areas uh, and we need to do it. And we are committed uh, to doing it. Absolutely. Listen, we, we're almost out of our time. Uh, we have, I think we only have a few uh, minutes, but y'all know I, that I, I need to stock up on my leadership uh, uh, books with you all. We always do this every every year with you all. What are you reading? 
and, and or what you're listening to, maybe if you're not um, uh, reading it, but you may be listening to. Um, let's start with Mayor Weston Broom. Any books or movies or whatever you guys have um, from, from, from the leadership uh, 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 stock? Well, uh, I, you know, I, I tend to read more than one book at a time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, usually I have two books that I'm trying to juggle. Um, and I would say while there, there are topics uh, perhaps maybe broader than uh, leadership, but certainly inclusive of leadership. So we know that financial literacy is a big issue, and I know the Urban League appreciates that. Well, one of the books that I am reading is by uh, Tiffany Alish, uh, and it is called Get Good With Money. Uh, <laughs> and that's, that's for the mayor's own personal uh, financial literacy, as well as being able to take that information and, and spread it out. The second book I'm reading at the same time is a uh, book uh, by Kim Cash Tate, and it's called Clean. And it is a, it's, it's a uh, spiritual uh, book. And uh, also I will add that Kim Cash Tate is the uh, wife of the president of uh, LSU. Wow, absolutely. All right, we got, we got a list. We're getting the, the list together. Mayor Hall, what, what do you have? All right, I'd be glad to share it. I had to get that one there, Get Good With Money. I got that, Mayor. So, uh, but no, uh, I'm looking at one book. Uh, I'm reading one book. Uh, it's called Begin Again. And it's by uh, Eddie Claude Jr. Yeah. And it's basically a, a, a comparison about uh, the, the poet, the writer, uh, James Baldwin, and mm -hmm. his experiences and what went on and what he wrote about as compared to what uh, Eddie Claude is seeing right now and comparing how how similar they're the same thing. So it's, it's time to begin again. I, th I think it's very interesting. And one again, being the accountant that I am, I had to go to one that's called Treasury's Wall. Uh, it's by uh, uh, Warren C. Zorate. And uh, it, it's about the, um, uh, the the unloading of an era of new financial warfare. And it's mm. some of the stuff that you see right now going on with the President of the United States calling on the SWIFT uh, operation to uh, control and, and rather than shoot bombs, they do things other ways as it relates to controlling currency and the currency of those who control bad things. So uh, I find that to be very interesting. So I'm, 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 I'm like Mayor Broom going between those two books when I get Absolutely. the Absolutely. I'm the same. I'm the same. But again, again, it's one of, one of my best. All um, right. Mayor Cantrell, what, what's, what's on Baldwin? Um, uh, your list for right now? Well, what I will say, I started reading um, The Art of Strategic Leadership, mm. like um, how leaders at all levels prepare themselves and their teams and organizations for the future. Just trying to, you know, I, I um, have these calls with my leadership team weekly and I, you know, you have to always focus on um, giving them little, you know, pieces to motivate them. And, and I, I share with them because, I, hey, you you know, as the mayor, I'm, I'm trying to be better as well, you know, every day. And it's, and it's okay to self-assess and, and, mm -hmm. and, and be vulnerable. I, I'm, I'm that way with my team so that they understand that we are in this, is in this together and they're trying times and I need to keep them motivated. I need to keep them built up because there's so many sometimes noise or loud voices that can be distractions and we need to stay mm -hmm. focused in the midst of the storm. Mm. And so I, I, I just really focus heavily on building my, my people up. And they're, they've been the ones uh, mm. that has kept government running and working uh, and getting results. And so uh, I, I'm sometimes like a little mama bear, uh, but I, I have to, um, you know, I love my people and I just have to keep them motivated. I also, you know, I've been doing a lot of, uh, picking up magazines, you know, to uh -oh. break up the monotony for myself, <laughs> you know, to, to take myself out of it a little bit yeah. as well, because your mental health is very important. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's okay to say you're not okay. And so okay. I've been, um, you know, doing some of the things that just take a load off or to kind of break it up so that, you know, um, it's not so, I'm not so serious uh, all the time and just kind of calm down. 
Mm -hmm. It's been some trying times, you know, that we've been through. And um, when you're in a position of accountability and you have others, the noise that have are not accountable to anything, you really got to do what's necessary to keep yourself focused on doing the work and not be distracted. So that's Absolutely. what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I always say this is just a lot, right? Mm -hmm. You can just look at the conversation that we had today we talked about COVID, we, call, we talked about infrastructure, we talked ab uh, about poli police reform, all of these things that you all have to deal with um, as leadership. So absolutely, Mayor Cantrell, you're absolutely right. Um, listen, I will, I think I am out of my time. Again, I want to thank all of you again. Um, this is literally my favorite uh, panelist, and I know it's my panelist, but I love it. Um, but thank you all again for not only just your leadership, but your service. Um, that is so very, very big um, in deal for, for all of us. So we um, have, I think our, our new uh, 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 keynote is coming. We do not want anyone to miss that. So please stay on. But again, we want to thank again, all of our mayors. Thank you everyone who watched and God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.